Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our full Pinodons alternative energy playthrough. We are, I would say zooming, but we're, we're plodding. We are plodding along, getting things done. I'm excited as we're continuing to move towards circuits, slowly but surely. Um, I did want to mention a couple things real quick, one of which is the OBS issue. It has been figured out, not fixed, it is a weird bug. Um, Roughly a third of the time when I open OBS, if I pause and unpause the recording, it all of a sudden triples its CPU usage and starts to drop frames in the recording. Other times I open OBS and I can pause and unpause the recording and it works great. So right now it's on the working great end of things. So if I need a pause, it shouldn't mess up the video, but that's why uh, a couple of those previous YouTube videos got weird with the stuttering issues is because of the, um, um, what do you call it? The pausing and unpausing. So that's a thing. And then, yeah. So sorry about the last episode. That one was a little weird. I got super discombobulated by that issue and I couldn't even focus. So I was a little bit off on that, but we are ready to tackle some new issues. The first thing I want to do in this episode is get stone brick running, um, I guess I say properly, because this has kind of been since the early, early game, and I've been having to hand feed all of these uh, furnaces, so we're going to stop doing that. Hey, thanks for the follow, Vermax1. And we have a lot of carriage in that I'm going to have to burn up at some point. I'm sure we'll find something to feed it to. Get rid of that, get rid of all these. We'll use our new uh, blueprint. I also am going to try to keep a slightly more organized blueprint book than usual. And I'm sure some of you may have an interest in it at some point. So I can always, um, you know, upload it onto the Discord. So pop over there if you're interested in some of the blueprints. And I'm going to try to... I'm going to remove that for now. Um... What's happening here? Okay, those are set correctly. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, the ash can actually just go on that. Should be okay. And... What's up, Emu Bob? Hey, hey, hey. So... I actually do want these on the hot bar. They just need it. It's weird how inventories and blueprints work because you can make it so that they don't take up any inventory space but are still on the hot bar. But if you make a blueprint and then put it there, it's in your inventory, but then you can stash it in a book. It's all kind of weird. Um, so I do want the early smelting and I want the burner miner coverage and I want the whitelisted ash. And I also want to be consistent. I'm going to capitalize the first word, but not the others. Unless there's a whole new sentence, which is probably not a thing. Okay, so burner drills, full coverage on stone. At least we're going to try for that. Looks like that. And then that. And yeah, we're going to be missing a few squares here, but that's okay. I guess, actually, it would be better if they all moved... Um, oh no, that one can't move left. Okay. No, I think that's good. Okay. So that'll be our system. Uh, get rid of the superfluous dudes at the end here. Get this all built. And I might make the alpha a little higher on my ghosts. I think they might be slightly too invisible. I'm trying to get that dialed into my preference still. And then, oh, I wish I had splitters so badly. Ah, um, we need coal on the left here. Which I think I can just steal. Uh, we decided one inserter works for three, so I need three inserters grabbing coal here. And this is going to be really difficult to do uh, without taking up too much room from copper. So part of me wants to utilize undergrounds.
and then I'll maybe do this. And you'll be rock hole. Which is raw horse. Okay. Trying to learn all those. So then we actually need you three. Maybe just here. Get rid of all that. I also need to start researching towards nanobots. That will be a nice quality of life. Adjustment? Okay, so then... Well, I guess those are separate as well. So we'll have one... No, that's actually still on the wrong side. It's the easiest way. I mean, I guess I could just have it go to the right. Um, mm -hmm, do that. That should work. And did I do the math? Is that going to be correct? 0. 0.6 times 3 is 1.8. Yes? Yes. These together are going to take 1.5 megawatts, that is. So we are good. Um, so then same here. How far can these go? I actually should kind of get a feel for that. Is that eight? Yeah, eight underground squares. So that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Okay, so there's another one. Now I'm gonna be sad that that doesn't look as good. And then... We'll feed this one with two because it's also feeding the other one. Okay, that should work. Uh, how many source miners do we have? Only four. I might throw another one back here. Copy all that. Get that all built. And gotta jump start it. Noise. Ah, Frosty Wampa with the hydrate redemption. Gotta stay hydrated. It's one of the important things of life. Ah, man. That's good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so stone is... Oh, stone and carrageen. Right. That is why we didn't do this before. I don't know how I forgot that. How did carrageen get on this? I actually have no idea. Huh. I don't know how that happened, but hopefully it doesn't keep happening. Um. Oh, you know what? It might have just been from the ground. It might have gotten dropped somehow. Okay, so we need to filter out... Gosh, this is a pain in the buttocks. Um, okay, let's do this. So we'll make some room for the ash. I have an idea. Don't know if it's a good one, but it's what my brain's doing for now. So, step one is to remove the coal. So that accomplishes that. And then step two is to sort out the carrageen and stone. Which, as far as I know, there's absolutely no way to do other than just filter inserters. So my thought is we just go with the rotisserie approach. Um, Can I do... Can I do a rotisserie with both lanes? That's the real question. And I think the answer is yes if I use an underground. So if I do something like this, that'll go on the inside lane. These will go on the outside lane. Yeah, that's fine. And now we've got a nice little rotisserie. And we can have four pulling stone and four pulling carrageen. 
That's my that's my grand idea. Where is carriage and alternative energy? No. Probably petroleum handling, yeah. Okay. And then stone, not in raw ores, but in intermediate products, because it's vanilla. Okay. So then we've got stone there, carriage in there. Carriage in, we'll just go into a bunch of storage for now. Should be good. Let me get all the stone out of there. And then stone will go to smelting. Oh, uh, actually, wait. Carriage in should first go to powering. Oh, wait. Hold on. Well, okay, yeah, well, not quite, hold on. I have I have ideas, and they're good ones. Um, so what we'll do, we'll actually do this, and that, and this, and that. And so now we have a belt with fuel and stone. And then we will power all of our, um, oh, we have the blueprint already, it's this. This is the blueprint. And I want to flip it. Like so, so the stuff goes to the right. Oh, thank you. Okay, now weird question. Does it still... Okay. I don't know if you remember. Um, I found a bug. I don't know if I ever reported it, so it might still exist. I found a bug when I was designing in the pure Angel... No, sorry. The ABZ playthrough, Angel Bob's Omni. When I was designing my multi-provider station, I found a bug with copy-pasting inserter circuit conditions that was kind of a mess. Ooh. You know, Jane, I do love uh, Twitch predictions, but I've found it very difficult to think of good Factorio predictions. Um, especially because to be a good prediction, it has to be a known fact that it will resolve. Otherwise, I just end up having to refund everybody's points and it's not even really fun. Um, so, I mean, I guess I could phrase it like, will there be a deadlock before the end of this stream? You know, and I could phrase it like that. Um, so I guess that could work. In any case, let me finish this before my brain goes on a new path here. Okay, so the fuel is going to go this way. And I'm trying to think. There's really no easy way to do overflow. Um, But I'm pretty sure the carriage in is always going to be more than we need because it's one carriage in for every stone. So that's not even close to equal amounts. It's going to be way more carriage in than we need. And so I'll just use the underground belt again. And you can reverse the underground belt if you didn't know by placing one and then you hit shift R. And so that's how you can kind of just grab one half of a belt off. And then we'll just put that all in there. And then we've got our ash to sort out, which will combine with this ash. And that'll come down here. Actually, I can just do that. And that will get booted into a chest. And then we can do the same thing with the stone brick. I'll bring it down a little bit so it's closer to access. That should do it. Also, Mini Loader still hasn't fixed this issue that um, loading into a chest loads at max rate, which it shouldn't, because this belt speed is supposed to be a fourth of the speed of a full belt, and it loads full rate. Oh yeah, that's definitely not right. Okay, so that should be stone bricks. Um, I'm even going to do this 
because I want more than one chest of stone bricks. Oh, you know, that's stupid. We could do that. Okay, so that should be full automation, and I don't even have to worry about power. You know, if I had been smart, I would have routed the carriage back around to just power the miners with it, too. Um, too late now. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Okay, air core inductors are stopped. Why are they stopped? Uh, because... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we were in the middle of fixing iron, and we never finished fixing iron, so we need to do that before we do too much other things. Too many other things. Um... What's really sad about this is a splitter would so easily merge two belts into one, but I can't do that easily. Because I can do side loading, but only with one lane, and I can't split the lanes once they're together. So this is really tricky. And part of me is considering forgetting the fuel and only grabbing iron by using the underground trick. And I'll just grab maybe three separate half belts. I don't know. I think for now that's, oh, nope, I wanted that there. Um, I think for now that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna bring up the fuel separately. And so we're just gonna grab the iron off of the belts like this. You made a smelting ray for each line. You know that's not not stupid. I'll say that much. Cause we already I guess the only issue we would need to keep spacing these out for sure. Um Or I guess we could just well, if I wanted them to fit in line, we would need to space them out. If I just expanded this farther up to be wider, we'd be fine without spacing them. I just already have this built, Dave, so I think I'm just going to figure out how to plug it into that rather than redesign anything. Um, so that's what we got for now. Okay, so there's those two, and then we'll do these two, and then these two. And then I'll have to figure out what to do about fuel, but that's fine. We at least got the iron. Good to go. And then what? So I need fuel on the top of each. How much fuel? Like, literally two inserters worth, is it? So then my idea is we grab the fuel from each previous one and dump it onto the next one. which magically works out so nice right there. Got lucky with that. And then we only need like a few inserters worth, I think five should more than do it. We have plenty of coal on this line. Um, this line is kind of sullied with, I guess we just need filters. Um, Whitelist, rock hole, I guess we can just move it, and then got five of those, and then I think we can just do that, little spaghetti there, but it works, five is a total of three, which is nine megawatts, and each of these was two, so we only need six megawatts, so that's plenty. 
Plenty, plenty, plenty. Um, okay, so... I think that's it. I think we're good to go. So we should be good on iron for a while. And then that should... Wait, oh, we disconnected iron, though. That's bad. Iron's supposed to be on this... belt there. Okay. Huzzah! Tap, tap. So that's good. Um, and that should get air core inductors going again. I can remove all of these. Trippy Triangle, how's it going? Yeah, back on the pie grind, indeed. Also, Portos, thank you for the follow. Uh, so many carriage and chests here. Not enough, apparently. Okay. Uh, start with the ash off to the side. Also grab that. There were extras in there. And then, you know, I didn't actually grab any stone. Oh, I've really rate limited myself here. Okay, I need to extend this a couple. I guess I didn't pay any attention to the rates. Okay, that'll be a little better. Uh, will this work properly? I think it will. Yeah, that still goes on the far side. Jux Joel, thank you for the follow. Or Jujux. Jujux. Jujuxel. For Victoria 3. You know, I don't even... I've never played many of those, like, ultra-complicated paradox strategy games. But I tend to look at the Steam pages a lot because they still interest me. They intrigue me. I don't know if I could ever really get into one, but they do intrigue me. And... That one has not been getting great reviews, from what I've seen so far. Okay, and the whole thing I actually wanted to do, and never did, was grab... Um... Some stone for a chest. For when I need it for crafting. Oh, and what else do we need stone for? I haven't even considered if we should have stone on a belt or something. Um, for now, it's stone bricks. Oh, we already have a vastly improved stone brick recipe. Look at that. With pitch thrown in, we get uh, almost double the amount of stone brick we would normally get. Oh, an improved moss recipe, although that's a lot of stone. And landfill, rails, a bunch of alien life stuff. Oh, gravel. Yeah, you crush it in gravel. Okay. So actually nothing, really. Nothing that we need to think about for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, Stellaris is fun that I... Not quite been able to get into. It's like, I know it's a fun game, and I just can't quite get there. And yes, Trippy Triangle, your save is completely broken because Pinodon's alternative energy has changed everything. So you have that to look forward to next time you fire up your save. In fact, you shouldn't fire up your save. You should start a new one. Or if you want to continue the old one, don't update any of the mods because they're not going to work. I meant to grab stone brick, not stone. Here we go. Okay. So that's good. Stone's going, iron's going. I'm happier with the amount of copper we're getting. Still not maxed out. Um, sweet. Okay. 
So back to making all this work properly. Um, what was supposed to go in here? I know this was wood. So what was this? Stone brick? I think that, yeah, that was stone brick. So let me go grab a bunch of those. Oh, you're talking about the beta save. Okay. So not quite as broken. All right, I'm gonna grab all my stone bricks and we'll throw those in here, minus a few stacks for buildings. And then I need a bunch more wood, soil, ash, Grab some more ash. Should lashed me a while. Uh, iron, small parts. We'll throw half of our small parts in. Grab some more bio reserve. You know, bio reserve used to be really expensive and annoying to get. I'm glad it's not anymore. You needed, um, what did you need? You, you needed not you needed the little tubes, the little bio sample tubes or whatever, and they needed titanium and all sorts of other stuff. That was a pain. Um, okay. Soil should be good for... How much soil do we need each? Five soil and three... So we actually do need quite a bit of soil. Let me go grab some more, and then I'll grab some more iron plates, and then wood. Okay. Go half of this in here. And then soil and wood. Yeah, bio containers. Oh, you still need them later? Okay. Well, at least we don't have to start with them. I'm gonna grab a bunch of seedlings to make more trees. Put those in here, and then I need... I don't need more logs. I do need more wood. I'm gonna actually increase that by a lot now that we have a good... a backlog. Heh. <laughs> nice. Uh, grab some soil. And... planter boxes. I still need a bunch of planter boxes. <sighs> Maybe... Because there's soil right here. And I think I will... Oh, I forgot. It's a two-step process. You need five ingredients to make a planter box. That is... a lot. Um... That's not gonna work. Okay, so we need iron. Okay, the soil's good, so we need ash, iron, stone, and wood. <clears throat> iron, stone, stone brick, sorry, stone brick, wood, and ash. So let me grab some ash. Could be enough for a while. And then that should get me planter boxes to use for, for this. And then we can put those in a chest. Okay, so that's semi-automated. I just need to feed it with seedlings, which we'll do a bunch more, because we'll need those trees eventually, I'm sure. And then... I probably need another woodcutter saw thing, so I think that needed stone bricks or something. I don't have the resources for it. Where is it? Wood processing unit. Oh, I also gave away all my iron. So let's undo that. And then stone brick. Okay, how are we doing on the rates? Still not great, huh? Too much carriage in. 
Alright, fine, fine, fine. Surely this will be enough. Six. We'll switch to Kerrigan. Okay, that's another three point six a second. In fact, that's 13, I accidentally, this is fun, I accidentally got exactly the amount to fill half a belt. Because 10 would be 6 a second, 11, 6.6, .6, 12 would be 7.2, and then 13 is 7.8. So that is actually the most we can do on one belt. And I also just happened to get the numbers equal. So that was, we'll call it intuition, but that was some luck right there. Okay. 65 hours in, gearing up for Pi 2. Ah, oh, wow. I doubt we're going to get there that quickly. Okay, so I still needed... I never put soil and wood into my science automator. We did finish a research, it looks like. Um... Ah, yes, we needed another one of these. I'm just gonna have it sit here and I can manually feed it. A bunch of logs and it'll, it'll work its way through eventually. Because this is actually not that fast. It's not even one wood a second to run one of these. Yeah, speaking of wood for fuel, this is another reason it's bad. Is this recipe uses 8 seconds worth of 500 kilowatts, which is 4 megajoules to create what is only 10 megajoules from the log. Is there another way to cut logs, or is that it? No, well, that's it. That's, that's all it's all there is, so I guess it's just... Wood is never really a great way for power. It's biomass, right? Because 50 bi- whoa, 250 kilojoules. That's a lot of, uh... Multiplication. So that's 2.5 times 5. That's actually not that much better than wood, but you use biomass in combination with other things to make uh, good fuel. But we'll get to that later. Um, do, 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 do. Moss is... It should be backing up, right? I thought this was more than we needed. Oh, it's actually not. So until, until seedlings are backed up, it won't be enough. I want one stack of moss, so I'm going to do this. Okay, and then I want to grab some more wood. And we'll get some more science going. Biomass is a byproduct a lot more. That's good. I mean, it makes sense that that would be the case. Okay, so soil goes up here, and wood goes here. Alright, so science can continue. Uh-oh, we're out of fuel over there. What does that mean? That means this is all backed up. I'm guessing these coke are, yeah. Lots of coke. Lots of fuel there. We have plenty of fuel. Uh, 
Okay, and then we need to continue queuing things up here. Solder. What have we not queued up? Ceramic. There we go. Okay, we have everything queued up to get to circuit ones. And there's a lot of steps until then. A lot of steps. Okay, so 10 ore was kind of on our project list. I can, I think, start working on that again. We needed to take care of all these other things first, I think. Oh, wait. Those are still needed. Wait, no, they're not. No mineable resources. Oh, wait, there are some up here. Interesting. Oh, I also never dealt with the ash. Good times. I should do that. Um, <laughs> Dave. Same idea. Uh, let's see. That's only 200, so we're just gonna do that. The sad part is it kind of needs to go left based on the side of the belt it's on, but I really want it to go right. I'm gonna craft some more undergrounds while I ponder. While I ponderify. I also thought I increased this. Did I make that up? I don't think I made that up. Alright, see you later, Dave. Have a good one. There's no room there, but I could make room here. Uh, cannot make room there, can I? I can do this and that, okay. Okay, oh, wait, nope, that doesn't work. We have to go up. And then over. That one will go to there. This one will join it. This one will join it. There we go. And I think, nope, we just have more up here too. Okay. All right, there's the ash collection. That guy's now done. This one is still got a few left. And we do have quite a bit of iron in chests that I'm still trying to take care of. These are getting there, I guess. So I will feed these a little bit longer, I guess. has slightly more than one iron chest still to go. And I could grab a few stacks of carriage in just to keep those all fueled up. I'm guessing it would have lasted until I tore it down as it was, but just in case. Okay, grab some more wood. How many trees we got here? 14, I think that's enough to finish this building. Yep, good. And then all it needs are seedlings to run in a loop happily to turn ash into logs. But we're currently stealing too much moss, apparently. Ah, oh, see, I hate that the debug menu doesn't show you the stack size of uh, modules. 
So for all the alien life stuff, you have to control shift F um, to see the stack size here, which is 50, to find out, which I really don't like. I like to just be able to hit F5 real quick and see the stack size. <clears throat> First world problems right there, let me tell you. Okie dokie, so that's good. Um... <laughs> How's the fuel looking for this guy? Oh, that's an ingredient, not fuel. Gosh, that's kind of brain breaking sometimes to think about. Like, sometimes coke is a fuel, sometimes it's an ingredient. Because normally you're not really thinking about coke as a building fuel. And, you know, it's one thing to burn it in boilers, but having burner assemblers and miners it's kind of different um all right i think let me do one more round on the iron here also how are we doing these chests are never gonna fill up right like literally ever it would need to burn thirty-two thousand coal which is like 10 hours if it used one a second, but it does, it's like 60 hours. Yeah, no, we don't need to worry about that. Don't need to worry about that one. Okay, nope. Oh, also I have seen this little hole in the stone. I just didn't have stone last time I wanted to fix it. Okay, grab the iron, turn some of that into steel, actually just turn all of it into steel. Sure we'll need plenty before the more efficient ways to make steel are here. And then grab a few iron plates and all the belts. Definitely not enough belts. Is there a way I can speed this up? Only if I can speed up small parts, which is only... I actually can speed this up. I don't know how much that'll speed things up, but somewhat. Okay, uh, I'm gonna grab a bunch more underground pipes. I don't think I'll ever call them pipe to grounds. Because it just, underground belt, underground pipe. It just makes sense to me. I don't, pipe to ground? Why don't you call it belt to ground? Like, I, I don't really get why those are so differently named. In any case, we gotta work on this. I don't have enough to get back, but maybe I have enough to get there. Ugh, I really don't love this. I don't love this project. The tin project. Um, trains at home is the blueprint. And I think I'd like to actually make the blueprint longer. I really wish I had a radar, but I guess I can do it this way. Um, trains at home. Click. Oh wait, are they supposed to overlap? By one? Yes, they are. Okay, so that's longer trains at home. Oh, see, but it ends on a full underground. So I think I'll do it that way. Yeah. Okay. And then we need to trains at home. Uh, new blueprint. Grab the whole thing. Save. Cancel that. Cancel the tree deconstruction there. And there we go. And then trains at home. Somehow we copied garbage at the bottom. Oh, it's tiles, okay. Uh, 
And then that should line up somewhere with this. Okay. Whee! At least the belt helps us do this faster. Oh, the trees. Stupid trees. Get out of here. Okay. Definitely got to get rid of some more trees here. this going well you know what I should do nanobots do those require circuits ah it does okay never mind never also repair packs seem to be more expensive 5 and 9.5 for the raw cost there so nanobots are definitely not I think by the time I get them, they won't be terribly expensive, but they're mediumly expensive because that literally means every single entity that a nanobot places costs you one copper plate and half a half an iron plate. That's that's kind of significant. You know, it's not massive, but adding a copper to the cost of everything adds up every belt, every inserter. Okay. Let's see. I see I should place the belts first cuz they help me run faster and get this done faster. Yeah, and that's true. I can hand build the ones that are more expensive. Or more, I should say, easier to build and more uh, quantity -ed. What's What's the word for that? More, more frequent, more, my brain's failing me. I don't know. Also, does this mean you got past the first two science packs? Uh, no, I haven't even... I haven't even gotten past the first. I, well, I mean, I've done the first. I'm not past it. I guess that's depends on how you mean that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just I'm just looking ahead. I, circuits are the first big um, task. I think you can get nanobots without the second science pack, right? Yeah, you don't need Pi One. So unless you need Pi One. For the circuits themselves, I should be good to get nanobots without the second science pack. Um, oh, the wood. I meant to drop this over here. For the sake of science. Okay, so now it is bolt. Wait a second, something's off here. Oh, that's easy to fix. There we go. Okay, and honestly, I can handcraft a bunch of belts. If I already have the ingredients, it's not too bad to handcraft. Nobody reaches the third science pack. Um, I I did. If you count, even in my last playthrough, um, I got chemical and pie science done, which actually is the first four, but really pie in the old set, pie was right along with chemical, and you needed pie science for most of the same researches as chemical science. So they kind of went together. There wasn't much you could do if you just did one and not the other. 
So I got that far, and that was only like a hundred something hours of playtime. Um, so I I plan to get farther this time. I want I want this to go for a while, and if I do kind of get burnt out a little bit, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break but not quit. Like I'll just do it like some intermission, other Factorio things if I really get burnt out. Okay, I'm gonna go grab more wood because that seems to be my primary issue right now with science. There we go, that's a lot. <laughs> I wouldn't say the rumors are uh, true, but they're not unfounded either. The vast majority of players um, don't get to the third pack. That would be true. But there are some people that have even beaten Pinodons completely. So, you know, it's not like nobody gets that far. It just takes a lot of patience to get that far. Uh, most tedious. I mean, probably true. A lot of it's not tedious, though. It's just long you know i and i get it it really i swear i've had this argument or discussion i should say because it's more just an interesting perspective type thing everyone has a different one um is pinodons tedious or is it hard is it easy but tedious is it hard but but complicated like i feel like there's a lot of different uh wildly varying ways to think about it some people will say Pinodons is easy. Oh, it's so easy. It's just tedious. And it's like, I think you're crazy if that's what you believe. Um, I would agree to disagree. Because yes, it's true. There, the idea of a recipe chain takes two items. You know, let's think of a simple vanilla recipe chain. Uh, engines. Engines are fairly simple, right? I think it's a, a gear... I don't even remember the vanilla uh, recipe for engines, but I know they have pipes, right? So iron goes to pipes, iron goes to steel, and then I think maybe there's one more thing, and then you have an engine. Whereas in Pinodons, you might, you know, have 30 steps to get an engine. But some people will say, they'll argue that that's still easy because it's like, well, all you have to do is just make 30 assemblers and connect them all with spaghetti. And I would argue there's difficulty to that. It's not like being able to plan out your spaghetti is difficulty. Like, I don't know what else you consider difficulty, but that is one of them. Plus the complexity of the technology tree, the complexity of, of remembering what goes where, the complexity of all the inner working items and systems in Pinodons. Honestly, the complexity of deciding which recipes are good because Pinodons has a lot of options for you. It's not just one way to make something. And so being able to know for sure, you know, which, uh, I think that, there we go. The, the two little blue dots have to line up properly. But yeah, the complexity of even picking recipes, uh, Pinodons is hard. I, I think it would be very disingenuous of someone to tell a player saying, hey, what's the hardest mod pack? I think you'd be disingenuous if you said anything other than Pinodons. Now, is it true that space exploration has a bigger game changing mechanic? Yes. Going to other planets is a bit more like base game changing than anything that Pinodons does. But I wouldn't say space exploration is harder than Pinodons. That just, that, I don't think that would be accurate. And Nolius is uh, definitely easier than Pinodons. I completely beat Nolius in uh, less than 100 episodes, I'm pretty sure. And I've never even come anywhere near beating Pinodons. So, yeah, Nolius is tough, but it's way easier than Pinodons. Definitely would disagree on that front. Uh, let's see. I mean, Bold Viking, who's a good Factorio player, 
Now, to be fair, he wasn't playing with um, a ton of quality of life mods, so I do think that slowed him down somewhat. And uh, you mentioned this before, someone, who was it? Yeah, Jane, you mentioned this, um, his UPS issues. He was having UPS around 20 near the end, which means the game speed was about a third of normal. But yeah, Pi is definitely harder. Anyway, what I was going to say is he took well over a thousand hours to beat Pi. I think it was like, was it even over 2000? I can't remember now. I think it was like 1200 hours or 1300 hours. Um, and again, you know, I think with certain quality of life mods, he could have shaved quite a few hours off of that, but that's how long it took him to beat it. And that was with alien life, but not the new mod, not, you know, the new one just came out. I don't know of anyone that's beat alternative energy yet. So all that to say, um, yeah, Pi is the hardest pack. I think, B. Jonas, you're halfway correct about the last statement, difficulty being what limits you. I think difficulty will limit a lot of players. A lot of players will quit Pi because it's hard. And the more experienced players that are happy to deal with difficulty are the ones who quit because it's long. Because Pinodons is both. Pinodons is a very long mod pack. Oh, you mean me, Cry you as in you, Crydax. Yes, I don't think difficulty will be what limits me either. If I don't finish Pinodons, it's because I ran out of steam, not because it's too complicated. I would agree. Because I love complicated. I love digging my teeth into asking the question, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> uh, that's fun for me. So yeah, I would agree. And I also mentioned this in the last episode, but I plan to take it pretty slow in this playthrough. Um, I I still didn't... I did the new Trains at Home blueprint wrong and the pipe... or the... whatchamacallit's poles aren't lining up, but I don't know. I'll fix it eventually. When I have to do the next Trains at Home, I'll fix it. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm going to be taking it slower this time, so hopefully that will help with the burnout. I think burnout happens the most for me when I've overextended a little bit. Like, I've I've rushed a bunch of lower tier things to try to get to a higher tier thing, and then all of a sudden I realize to do the next thing, I have to, like, rebuild all the other things that I've already built. I have to, like, redo everything, and then it's so overwhelming, and that's when... I feel the tendency to want to stop playing. And I think, at least as I've shared that previous times about previous things, a lot of other players uh, feel the same same kind of vibe themselves. I think that's a pretty common feeling to have in Factorio, is that sense of overwhelmed. So I would I would say my, my hope is that by playing a little slower and a little bit more methodically, smelling the roses along the way, um, that I won't get burnt out as quickly. All right, so 10 belt is here. Trains at home have arrived. Uh, we are going to send the fuel up. This is going to be the steam. Oh, you know what? I haven't looked at. Does... Nickel requires sand gas. Okay. Does anything require water? Or was that just BZ? I know BZ required water as a mining fluid. But I don't think anything else does. And I don't think anything does in Pinodons, at least. Because I was about to say, maybe we should send water up here and turn it into steam up here. But... There's not really a point to that, I don't think. And then I just end up with more ash up here than I need to. So, oh, I'm out of belts. Underground list playthrough. That sounds kind of interesting for vanilla, but... 
Yeah, I never, never considered not using undergrounds ever. Okay, so steam will come up here. What's the rate on these guys? Not very fast. We need a lot of these fluid mining. I'm glad this is a big patch of tin. And it's 29 million. I even turned down the richness, y'all. I think the richness is jacked on some of these ores. This should be enough tin for most of the game. Um, but I am going to need probably the whole patch filled with these fluid mining drills. Um, I'll craft more later. This should be enough to get started. Um, so the fuel. And then I think I'm going to... How do I want to do this? Fuel's going to come up. Yeah, see, I don't want to miss a square of coverage. So actually, that's all I get. That's all the room that I get. So, like in between two miners. So we should use undergrounds for this. And if I remember correctly, they can make it the whole way. Yep. And so these will feed in fuel. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it'll be like that. And then there will be an ash line. Also, this came up yesterday, too. I feel like this keeps coming up in various places. Uh, belt weaving. Some people, this is what they're talking about when the word belt weaving is used. Um, is just weaving back and forth. So you can do something like this and something like that. Right, this is what's going to take the ash out. Um, it's not what I mean when I say belt weaving. And I feel like most of the time when I've seen people talk about belt weaving, they're talking about using different colors of belt all in the same underground, like the red undergrounds and the yellow undergrounds all like in the same line, which then you can't be upgraded because otherwise it would break because it requires the different colors to not interact. That's belt weaving in my book. This, I don't have a name for it. I might call it uh, zigzagging or something, you know, squiggling. But. See, and braiding and weaving sound really similar. Um, and I feel like, depending on how you think about it, both words could make sense for both things. So I think we need a new name for this as a community that is not braiding or weaving, but is like, you know, sidewinding, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, exactly. This is just spaghetti. Exactly. That That's all it is. It's just good old fashioned spaghetti. Okay. I think we're good, right? On all the, on all the fronts here, this is good to go. You know what, since I've designed it now, I might as well copy this into my blueprint book here. Uh, this is called Fluid Miner. Full coverage. Oop, sorry, only capitalize the first word. I'll just call it Fluid Miners, that's good enough. Okay, and then the 10 is here, and I will go on this belt. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Do I need to do anything else? Like, I'm scared to walk away because I don't want to have to walk back up here. Oh, I need to attach the other two miners. Let's start with that. Of course, I run out of belts. Can still make a few more at least. Okay. Uh, are we good on no ghosties? Nope, I have three ghosts. The ghosts are the same color as the tin, so it's pretty hard to see. No ghosts, okay. And then really, I should check the whole... 
I don't think it works on fog, though. So I just need to keep a careful eye as we walk back. Um, but I'm pretty sure if we send steam here and we put fuel on this belt, that we will be good to go. Oh, uh, ash needs to be dealt with um, as well. For now, I'll just do this. That should last me a long while. Okay. I think that's good. And these are whitelisted on Ash. Let me double check all of them. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, good. Good. Okay. I think that works. And uh, power. I brought power up here. Um, I guess I don't need it yet, do I? I'll need it eventually, once we have electric drills and such. Or even electric inserters. But for now, we don't need that. Also, Yivri, how's it going? You, you jumped out of lurk mode. Okay, why is my bot... Oh, okay, good. I was gonna say, my bot's broken. You've been playing some Factorio too. What, uh... Did you say space exploration? Am I remembering that right? I feel like everyone's playing space exploration these days. Looking carefully for missing blueprints. SE is just an optional dependency. <laughs> My current design uses a lot of unnecessary extra belt. Oh, do you mean for the fluid miners? Yeah. I could probably... I mean, one easy way I could do it is I could shorten the underground, so there's two unnecessary squares. Um, and I, I don't see any other... Um... Right, I could not do the squiggly, but then I would have to side insert the ash. And the reason I didn't want to do that is because I can never remember which side of the belt. I can't currently set uh, the drop location with the Bob's inserter, and I don't, I actually want it to be on both sides of the belt for future proofing, which maybe was unnecessary, but that's at least why I did it. I kind of wanted it to be on both sides. Not that it's important, because the amount of ash will probably never be very much, but it was at least a thought. Whether it was a good one is up for debate. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I need all the belts again. Take all the inserters, and we've done it! So now I just need fuel. Gosh, this has been a long episode. Um, so I think I'm gonna call it there, and we'll get that hooked up at the start of the next episode. Because we're already at an hour and eight minutes. So, as always, for those of you on YouTube, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the next episode.